<laughs> hey, let me talk to you. Yeah. Hope everyone's doing all right. And I uh, hope everyone's doing great after that bloodline segment. Now, I feel like this is going to be a trend as far as content that I cover on this channel. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe because I'm most certainly going to be covering every single update to the bloodline story or this new or new blood i don't like calling it new blood this is still the bloodline story this is a new saga in the overall bloodline storyline so let's get into it so on the april 19th edition of friday night smackdown solo sokoa arrives in a full-on suit and is welcomed by paul Heyman. to which paul is kind of like whoa like what are you doing in these nice ass threads and then solo is essentially on a mission before this mission though he wants to emphasize to paul that there is now a new member of the bloodline this is the official coronation of i guess the induction of a brand new bloodline member in tamatanga as to which he also refers to him as his mft which Every time I ask this on Twitter, I don't think a single person knew because I don't think anyone knows. Um, and I don't know by the time this video comes out if we're going to know. So if you're watching this from the future and you know, definitely leave it in the comments because like I can't even figure it out on my own. I should also note while he's embracing Tamatanga, which he's been doing to essentially replicate how roman used to embrace everyone in the family tama was death staring paul Heyman. now this is an important piece of detail to note because to me this means that tama does not fully trust paul because i think the tiny details that we all need to pay close attention to are what's going to make this grandiose story mean that much more the reason why i feel like he's death staring paul Heyman like that is like i said he doesn't trust him because he is in allegiance and alliance however way you want to term it to the actual head of the table the actual tribal chief roman reigns and i feel like it's this piece of detail that actually makes this so much more important because if roman was still champion if he never lost does that mean that we would not get a tamatanga we would not get any of these future potential bloodline family members added to the overall group that is a is is somewhat of an indicator to me because i feel like through this new allegiance that Solo is, you know, now leading this charge, Tama is like the perfect person to essentially come through in this new era, if you didn't already know, of the bloodline. So later on in the night, Solo has a backstage segment with Paul Heyman again because he, they're trying to look for Kevin Owens. So that was the mission that Solo mentions or he's that he's clearly on once he arrives to the arena. It seems like he wants to take out his aggressions on someone and who better than the person that thought it was so easy and chummy to just go right into the new champion's locker room, Cody Rhodes. So I guess as an example, it makes sense if you're trying to assert your dominance, then you're going to have to make examples out of people that cross you, even in the lightest of ways. In but so many words, Paul essentially says, Solo, it's not your time to make such decisions. Basically telling him, you're not the tribal chief just yet but he doesn't want to say that verbatim because you know he also emphasizes that he is the last person that he wants to piss off on this earth which is crazy to say but i feel like when paul Heyman gets really scared he'll say anything that comes to mind to save his ass i mean as after all all his is a survivor he survives through all the scariest of people. He's been the advocate for Brock Lesnar and his resume goes on and on and on. After Solo Sokoa interrupts Paul and he was not trying to hear it, they have that awesome shot where they don't even do any cuts from the backstage to his entrance. He comes out to his theme song, as always a banger. To which Paul Heyman essentially takes over just like he would in normal fashion whenever Roman decided to come out. Except this time, Paul was trying to explain the backstage politics happening within the bloodline. And once he was trying to explain a little bit more detail, the crowd actually did something very surprising. And I just think life works in so many funny ways now, doesn't it? 
I was very pleased to hear everybody in that arena chanting, we want Roman. The great part about this is that you can literally see Paul's expression as he wanted to emphasize even more about how he was there to serve his tribal chief, but he couldn't even finish saying that because Solo was not trying to hear that. He was not trying to give in to this sentimental moment that people didn't want him but they wanted roman every time solo tried to say anything the crowd was booing him like he was dominic mysterio yes if you haven't seen any of these segments guys you definitely need to go re-watch smackdown for those segments alone as a matter of fact i'm pretty sure wwe might as well just take every little bit of bloodline story that we get all throughout the show and just put it into one video and put it on their youtube channel they have over a hundred million subscribers that's no exaggeration they would get so many millions of views on bloodline specific moments and i mean they do obviously but i'm talking about all of them because some of this stuff isn't covered on their channel but that's why i'm here so solo's trying to fight off all of these boos and basically all he's trying to say is that he had to lose a brother so that he can gain a new one so he is looking at tama as essentially his replacement to jimmy uso which is his actual brother the funny thing is i feel like if we are to believe which is the heavy uh belief across the fandom that jacob fatu and potentially hikaleo i don't know about tangaloa if they actually end up getting all of the the rest of them from bullet club over there in new japan that's gonna be pretty insane i hope it does happen if you want to talk about making an entrance and making a first impression we can't even forget that thomas debut was last week when he took out jimmy completely took out jimmy obviously with solo's help as well but they're there to assert their dominance and to reestablish the bloodline as a very menacing and savage force and keyword word on savage right as soon as he mentions his name it's not tama that we see come out of the, the curtain first we don't even get to hear what his wwe theme is we literally see a battered bloodied and destroyed kevin owens get thrown out onto the ramp first before tama actually steps over him and then enters the ring this guy messed up kevin owens and if his first impression wasn't enough last week well i think people are going to start paying attention and recognizing that you do not mess with tama Tonga. and honestly the way they're booking him right now is very perfect because what happens after this oof, is only selling this guy way more he continues to beat up kevin owens when he tries to make some sort of a comeback because obviously it's Kevin Owens, so he's not going to go down without a fight. This dude could barely walk. He was literally a bloody mess. He looked like he had a gash on the side of his head. Even though security was trying to split the fight apart, they ended up essentially helping them. And that's, you know, funny WWE stuff for what it's worth. So that Solo could give him the Samoan spike straight to the throat. And then Tama was given the opportunity to just continue beating him down on the floor. This dude looking like he was scratching, clawing, actually biting him in the side of the head, headbutting him like a complete savage. And he did not stop until one SmackDown general manager, Nick Aldis showed up and then they all stopped. And of course they have the amazing looking we the ones at the top of the ramp. But that's not it. We're not even done there. Because the cliffhanger to all of this bloodline story for this week is we're now back where we started in the parking lot. You see, wrestlers, I'd imagine, come in loner cars. So Nick Aldis explained to Paul Heyman that let me paint you a picture of what scene that we're looking at right here. That loner car is Kevin Owens. And that loner car is Tama Tonga's. And Tama's crashed into kevin owens this guy is really trying to kill him so in but so many words nick aldis utters this very important line to paul Heyman: losing isn't the only thing that has consequences so again guys if you haven't seen this segment i really 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 advise you guys to go and check it out i think missing an episode of smackdown or any show that has bloodline moments because we can't forget that the draft is coming up very soon and even though jay uso is on raw they did ask him last week if he saw the attack that happened on jimmy and it seems like jay does feel bad and he's still open to even reuniting with his brother 
so that they can be the Usos and continue on with their tag team legacy. But obviously, he's busy doing his own thing, being the main event Jey Uso that he is. Now, with all that being said, when it comes down to this new edition of this story, it tells me a few things that I feel like we all need to really start acknowledging before things are getting out of hand. First and most important thing is that I, I want to address one of the biggest elephants in the room. I know that there's fans out there that want to believe that the actual tribal chief that's giving these orders is and could potentially be The Rock. Now, as much as that does make sense, and I can see that being the case, I want to emphasize, I've been saying that word way too many damn times, that Solo is and has to be this fill-in tribal chief that has begun ever since last week. I started making those claims with my last video, and now I am here to remind y'all that it is 100% has to be solo now we're gonna really be able to tell once the weeks and months roll along and i hope that this is not one of those situations where they string us along this entire time making us feel like solo is this you know self-imposed tribal chief but then next thing you know when the rock calls up wwe and says hey uh i can actually come in next week <laughs> then they just flip the script and it's all oh, it, it was the rock the whole time i don't want that to be the case i really think that this story is way more interesting when you have a character that was already built up to be the heir of the throne now essentially assuming and taking over said throne and making all of these decisions and calls that he's not technically authorized to make but that's what makes it so interesting because this dude is literally taking his own reign and shoving it in everyone's face and if you have something to say about it well you'll just get destroyed like kevin owens did so again we have to realize that the new and current tribal chief on tv right now is solo sokoa the other thing that i wanted to pay more attention to and just so that you guys can be reminded of this as well is that paul Heyman is literally on the fence here but he's obviously leaning more towards roman reigns he is his wise man and even though he doesn't want to fully come out and say that he is Roman's wise man. He's not technically Solo's wise man. I mean, he's trying to really be careful with his words. He's very he's very tiptoey right now. And he's being very selective with how he says things, how he words things. Because again, he's not trying to piss off Solo. But Tama is very aware of this. And this is the part where, again, I repeat myself and I tell you guys that y'all cannot sleep on this and you need to pay attention to quite literally every bit of detail. And last but not least, I wonder what the repercussions are that Nick Aldis has against Paul Tama and Solo. I wonder if he's going to put them in a situation where they're going to have to like wrestle it out to keep their jobs because he did emphasize like on my show we deal with issues in the ring which makes sense it's obviously a wrestling show i just wonder if they're gonna take it so far as to threaten their jobs whereas or like it, to give them a chance at least to like keep their jobs but you know at that point i feel like certain sets of stipulations all but guarantee the outcomes and i mean it's not like we don't already know like once tama gets his first match there's no way he's losing it whenever Solo's gonna be wrestling i don't think he's gonna be losing at all so having those types of stipulations would almost be pointless but again it makes it a little bit more interesting and people are gonna be paying attention either way so if there's anything i missed let me know what your thoughts of this week's uh bloodline segment how that went if there's anything else wrestling related that you guys want me to talk about my thoughts whatever let me know and if you guys would be interested in possible like live streams to discuss this stuff with you guys live right here on this channel then also let me know in the comment section below and uh, if you're looking forward to this draft who you guys think is going to raw who's going to smackdown who's even going to nxt all that and more and uh, take care of yourselves and i'll see y'all in the next one also p.s i need all of the new air jordan roman reign stuff i know it was a gift to him but god damn it i i want all the merch okay bye